Hello, everyone. Thank Hello. you for uh, coming out this evening uh, for our first Art Talk event. Um, it's pretty great. Uh, we still have a few people uh, who will be joining us uh, soon. Um, thank you for everyone who's shown up uh, early and on time. That's great. Uh, we've got a, a really wonderful evening with some amazing artists um, talking about their work tonight. Uh, so I guess um, just to get started, um, I think it's... Uh, incredibly uh, important that we recognize and appreciate that the lands on which we gather for our cultural activities are on the unceded and ancestral territories of the Coast Salish peoples, of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and Musqueam peoples, and we are ever so thankful and thrilled to be there, uh, to be here uh, and enjoying this wonderful place where we live, even though we're not able to experience it fully right now, or at least not with uh, all the people we wish. Um, we're really happy to be here. I guess we'll just do uh, a few uh, quick intros, maybe. Um, I'll be your host this evening. Um, well, one of your hosts. Um, my name is Steven Snyder. I am the Gallery and Communications Coordinator for the West Vancouver Community Arts Council. Uh, and uh, a little bit about the Arts Council. We're a not-for-profit organization based in West Vancouver uh, that is dedicated to fostering and promoting uh, arts and culture uh, for our community and the entire North Shore. And I'll pass over to, uh, and my name says Jennifer Lord, um, but that's not my name. My name is Steven. Uh, that's just uh, uh, my boss. That's our executive director, and she signed up for the account. So that's the name that pops up when we use it. Uh, technology, everyone. Uh, so I'll pass it over to uh, our co-host for this evening, Taryn. Hi, everyone. This is my first webinar, so this is very exciting for me. I am the Arts and Special Events Programmer here at the, which way am I? The West Vancouver, oh, I'm so backwards. The West Vancouver Memorial Library, where we're all very much missing our, our familiar patrons. Uh, I hope before we closed our doors, some of you were able to see our exhibit that we had up on the walls. We called it Reflect, Reposition, and Reimagine. It was um, using upcycled and um, uh, upcycled and reusable artifacts to create new works of art. Lori is one of the artists that was part of that. I'm probably getting a bit ahead of myself, but <laughs> I just wanted to say uh, welcome everyone and I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, it should be a, should be a very interesting and, uh, and fun, hopefully informative uh, and inspiring night for all of you uh, watching. Um, Yes, I guess we should talk about that. Uh, so as you're probably all aware, you can see and hear us, um, but we will not be able to see or hear you, um, just to kind of keep everything nice and clean. Um, if you do wish to communicate, uh, there is at the very bottom of your screen, you'll see there is a Q&A uh, icon. Uh, we will be having a question and answer period after, so if you have any questions for the artists, uh, that's where you can type them, and uh, we might not be able to get through all of them, but hopefully we'll be able to get through quite a few. Uh, so if you have questions throughout the panel, feel free to type it in there. Um, and you'll also see uh, there's a chat icon down there at the bottom as well, and that will appear on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, so with that, you can just leave general comments for, uh, for everyone to see, um, or uh, if you have something specific you want to say to a friend you know who's watching as well, um, you can chat in there about what you're, about what you're watching. Uh, so we hope that uh, you can have some great interactions with uh, not only us, uh, but the rest of the community, everyone else who's uh, participating right now. Awesome. So I think, uh, yeah, I think we've got quite a few people do we want to go ahead and start. Yeah, let's go ahead and start. Uh, so we've introduced uh, our hosts, so we'll introduce our panelists now. Um, Taryn, do you want to introduce Lori? Yes, um, I'm going to, I a few people are just still coming online. <laughs> uh, everyone, I will be, I'm kind of the, uh, the back end person today uh, during all this, and I'm just going to uh, submit, admit a few more yeah. people, so yeah. I will get you to, to carry on. <laughs> Totally. Yeah. Awesome. So we've got uh, Lori Goldberg, a very uh, talented and wonderful and very experienced artist uh, who's exhibiting, as Taryn said, in uh, the library's exhibit, uh, which is 
a beautiful exhibit and beautiful work that Lori has. Um, you see Lori is, uh, oh, you can all see their names. That's right, I don't have to describe them. You can see who they are. <laughs> Still getting used to this. This is also my first webinar that I posted. There you go, there's Lori. Uh, next up, uh, we've got Shang Su. You can wave if you like. She's a, a really talented painter. Um, Hello. She's got work uh, she's in, uh, that's up on the digital exhibition the Arts Council has uh, posted on our website. It's called Distant Together. Um, we normally operate the uh, West Wing uh, Silk Purse Arts Center is where our home base is and where we usually would have a physical exhibition, but now we've done this distance together online uh, with beautiful artwork from Sue. And also it features artwork by Eric Bartnow, who's our other panelist tonight. He's got a, some great mixed media work as well that we'll all get a chance to, uh, to see a little bit later. Um, so speaking of um, the spaces, um, we just wanted to give you a little bit of an update that while the Silk Purse Gallery and the West End Memorial Library, um, like the rest of the district, continues to take advice from provincial and coastal health authorities, um, we're closed. Um, but in the meantime, it's wonderful that our artists are willing to share their work through virtual exhibitions and online discussions. Um, so any questions about when our facilities and stuff will reopen? Um, that's uh, not this uh, panel. This panel is about the art. Um, but to let you know that we are really thankful to have people like these wonderful artists participating in our online programming to be able to share uh, with the rest of you. And I guess uh, we can give a little of an introduction about what uh, Art Talk is, uh, this panel this evening. It is kicking off um, our first Thursday's Art Walk, which this year is virtual. Uh, so last year was the very first First Thursdays Art Walk. Uh, it was initiated by the West Van Arts Council, and we had some wonderful partners, including the library. Um, and it was an actual physical art walk where all of the galleries and community spaces that were showing art um, were open extended hours the first Thursday of the month from May through August. Um, and we created a map um, where people could just walk to all the different galleries and they could see all the public art that was on display and they could really discover West Van through the art and the art institutions that were there um, on the Ambleside and Dunderay of neighborhoods. Uh, it was a really wonderful experience. There was lots of extra programming uh, in a lot of those galleries and community spaces, um, like artist demos and collaborative community art projects and art tours. Um, but now, since we're closed, um, our extra enhanced programming uh, is this wonderful panel we have right here, Art Talk. Um, so the actual art walk uh, is now all online. Uh, our participating uh, galleries uh, include uh, the Silk Purse, the West Van Library, the Ferry Building Gallery, the West Van Art Museum, and Buckland Southurst Gallery. And so if you go to uh, the West Van Arts Council's website, uh, you can go to the First Thursdays page, and you'll be able to have links to all of the exhibitions that they're uh, putting on as part of the Art Walk. Uh, there's really wonderful artwork to see. Uh, in your community that you can experience from the comfort of your own home. I know the library has a bunch of other links to some other great uh, exhibitions across the North Shore, not just in West Vancouver. Um, so to uh, get on with tonight, why you're all here, uh, is to hear from these wonderful artists. So uh, first up, uh, we'll just ask each artist to uh, talk a little bit about their work. Um, that's uh, on display in these virtual exhibitions and also kind of their work in general. We'll have some slides you'll be able to see of their artwork um, and just let us know uh, what their inspirations are, why they've uh, made this kind of work and how they became to be associated with our uh, respective galleries. So we're gonna start off first with Lori. Yay, lucky me. So I'm just gonna pull up an example uh, of your artwork, Lori. All right. Uh, well, um, Taryn actually approached me. She saw my work at the, uh, at the Deer Lake Gallery in an exhibition called Revision. Um, uh, it was uh, founded by Ron Simmer, a fellow artist. And, hmm, where are you? Lost you. And, um, oh great, okay. And, uh, sorry. One second. And I just lost you again. I hate this technology. 
Okay, and um, she approached me to ask me if I'd like to participate in the group show at the, the library in West Vancouver. And I really love that idea because the type of work that I've been exploring in the last five years is really important for the audience who not, not normally goes to a gallery to be able to see the work. It, it was, it, the work is really um, meant for everyone to, to enjoy and to experience and to connect to and respond to. And so a public space like that library made, like the library made a lot of sense, especially when I found out that it was what, the busiest library in all of Canada. Um, so that uh, inspired me and, um, so my work is, is quite eclectic. It's um, moved in quite a few directions, and uh, in a way, it serves me because it has serves, served me because um, I've I've uh, actually intersected them and uh, and combined them to create more tension and interest to um, kind of uh, ex um, describe more about what I'm trying to say. Uh, environment has really been an interest of mine from a very young age. Even in grade 11, I did a video about pollution. It was uh, based on a Tom Lear song about, you know, uh, use your latest toothpaste and wash your mouth out with industrial waste. <laughs> this video, and uh, I watched it, it was on a Super 8, I watched it so many times that I destroyed the Super 8 film. <laughs> I was so proud of myself. Um, and then over the years, I've, I've been exploring uh, different things about the urban environment and then nature and um, also just the, the beauty of a mundane object um, and uh, mundane views of, of nature. And I've found that I've been bringing them together and um, making uh, commentary about our environment. So the two pieces that you see here are kind of two directions um, that I've been exploring the last uh, few years. One other aspect that has kind of moved in my direction of my work is also the socially engaged side. I like, as I said about the library, but I also engage people to make things out of uh, recycled materials and to kind of make more, uh, bring more awareness about the, uh, the, the garbage or the waste that they have in their own homes. So the first one on the left, which is called Take Out the Trash, is um, based on um, visiting waste management sites and interviewing some of the caretakers and finding out more about how garbage is dealt with in our communities. And, um, and I would uh, document it with my camera, the piles of what I saw around me. There's, I feel there's a bit of a poetic aspect to it, which um, kind of brings back to the mundane object, um, because I find that, um, well, some of the things I've explored about a mundane object is that, you know, some people may have this object that to us looks mundane, but for them it has, um, hasn't been invested in some sort of meaning or beauty for them. And when I think of these piles and piles of garbage, what are they? They uh, have tossed out objects that at one point had some meaning to the owners. And what are they made out of? They're made out of elements from our own uh, planet that have been, through ingenuity, transformed into some other object. But when they go back into these garb, you know, into get discarded, what happens to them? A lot of them don't go back to the original form. They sit there for hundreds and hundreds of years. And so I became kind of curious about that. So, um, and then just as an artist and, and someone who's visually just, um, I'm just so, uh, moved by the objects in what I saw in them, which is all about anything, I, everything I love about painting, which is lines and shapes and textures and forms. I mean, they were just all piled together. It's just like going to a candy store. So that inspired me because it just brought my painting side of me out and then kind of juxtaposing it with buildings that you see in the background. The other one, so I've been continuing on with these trash um, piles, but uh, the other side of it is um, the other part of my exploration is actually using the objects in my work. So plasticized wildlife is that was as an example. I've used a single-use plastic uh, that had come from my own um, garbage or packaging, and said so that could be garbage, and I've fused them onto the canvas, and then I juxtaposed animals that uh, are. Uh, 
affected by the plastic that gets thrown out either in landfill or uh, in what we find in our waterways or on our land. And I created a bit of a, of a neon edge around some of the animals so that they get a sense that they've been, you know, they're full of toxic material. And then I think about, you know, the fish that we eat and how we consume that and what are we consuming but plastic too because they found plastic in the, in the, in the animals and in the, in the fish. So anyway, so this has been kind of an exploration of bringing these two together. And I just recently in March of one of the fortunate artists that um, I went to a residency where I worked with 150 children in a small town in Mexico and we created uh, an installation using single use plastic out of garbage. Well, I'm here. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Lori. You're welcome. All right. Uh, now, I guess we will. Uh, we'll move on to. Uh, we'll move on to. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Just find find panels and everything. Ah, we're gonna move on to uh, to Shang Su. If you wanna please talk about uh, about some of your wonderful artwork that we're gonna see in a minute. Sure. Um, actually, I had exhibition group exhibition in Kimik uh, Gallery. Then we had a great opening, but uh, we have to lock down because of coronavirus. It's only halfway. So, um, but uh, then I uh, we have to stay home. So I start try to paint paint some something new, and I want to think about uh, what happening in the world and uh, um, how I can react uh, to what's happening right now uh, as an artist and uh, how I can speak uh, through my artwork to make a communication with the world. So I create eight, uh, the new paintings. Actually, it's very different from the, the ones I displayed in the Kimik. And it's a, uh, uh, there's a, a great opportunity that West Van Art Council organized a data exhibit online. So I had another chance to uh, display my artwork, my new artwork. Um, um, so the online is called Distant Together. Um, actually, this works. Uh, I first painted the middle one, the like uh, the so-called like, uh, uh, and then the uh, flag mask one. The last one, the first one. <laughs> so um, I found that right now the because of a coronavirus, it's like an enemy, like uh, you know, it's di natural disaster is attacked uh, innocent people. We don't know when we will got it, and we don't know who will have it because there's uh, no symptom sometimes, and for some people, and uh, we even don't know where to get it. So it's uh, we got kind of scared. And uh, we uh, we feel kind of uh, uh, what we what we, we cannot do anything to seem to, and um, then but we never lost help. When I read the news every day through internet and uh, um, so many touch stories there, and the people uh, encourage each other, and and I saw new some like uh, young students they help elder people to buy glossary, lots of famous musicians and singers and artists to perform their works for the world, to um, uh, bring people a positive way to uh, uh, look, look at their life right now. And there is another very touchy story about nine, nine years old. War hero raised a million for the coronavirus health workers, step by step. So I, I think with our humility, um, we, are, we are supporting each other and we are very powerful with this kind of support and love and we will go uh, through this successful, successfully later. Um, I'm, an, I'm so happy to uh, show my work through the uh, digital exhibit and thanks for the galleries and all the creators and the uh, workers their effort to make this happen, to uh, use art to reconnect our together again and uh, bring some uh, joyful time for us. Thank you. Totally. Awesome. Great. Thank you, Sue. 
Awesome. And so next, uh, next we'll hear a little bit from, from Eric. Awesome. So yeah, so please, Eric, let's, uh, let's hear about your... Sure. Thanks, Stephen. Um, and uh, also, I'd like, first off, I'd like to start with thanking both you and Taryn and the West Bend Community Arts Council and the West Bend Library for giving us the opportunity to be here and, and uh, for creating the virtual exhibits. It's uh, quite, um, it's a great opportunity in, uh, in these times when things are a little bit difficult in uh, a number of ways. Um, these are the four pieces that I put in here. The two on the top are quite large uh, and two on the bottom are quite small. Um, the one on the upper left uh, is uh, the one that is in the Distance Together exhibit. Uh, this was not done for that exhibit. It's um, the second painting of five currently in a, an exhibit that uh, I called the Aspera. This one was called, uh, the painting is called uh, Discontinuity. Um, the Aspera, for people who might be unfamiliar with the term, the way I'm using it really just refers to the migration of a people from their native land and their original uh, original land. And historically, this has happened over and over and over again, and it's not going to stop. These have been, so there's these migrations are the result of wars and famines and, uh, uh, you know, economic circumstances and uh, you name it, and uh, environmental change. And uh, I think those things aren't really going to stop. So we're going to continue seeing this sort of thing. So there's a lot of relevance, I think, in the, concept and um, also in uh, 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 basically a lot of relevance in the context of the past and the future. Uh, the painting itself is uh, specifically inspired by, by, by my parents' uh, journey and experience in the late stages of the Second World War when they had to flee Estonia when uh, the Soviet Union was coming in to occupy the country. Um, this was a pretty good decision on their part. Uh, the Soviets didn't leave for 50 years, so uh, well, it worked out to be the right decision. It wouldn't have ended well if they stayed there. At any rate, I've used here, there's quite a bit of symbolism in this painting, but uh, I've used the, uh, the flag color for some Estonian flag, which is the blue, black, and white. And uh, there's, uh, and also in here, there's the Canadian flag color, which back then, I'm sure Stephen and Karen aren't familiar with this, but uh, we had the red ensign as our flag, not the, uh, the maple leaf. Uh, and so basically, you know, the name of this is discontinuity. It's, uh, it's trying to show, uh, you know, the sudden change and a not particularly pleasant change and some things in the middle. I think it's kind of a dark painting in a lot of ways, but, um, and most of my uh, work is quite optimistic, although maybe not what's showing here. Um, and uh, the, that's mitigated a little bit by the fact that the surface that this is painted on was really scoured with uh, moldy paste. And, uh, uh, it really it reflects light in a lot of really interesting ways, which makes it a bit more visually appealing. Uh, the colors themselves are appealing. So uh, the, you know, the bottom line is while this is you know, a, a terrible story for anyone that has to go through it, it's not necessarily um, the worst thing, there are some upsides to this sort of thing as well. Um, so next painting over to the right, another urban environment scene. Uh, I looked at Laurie's painting when I first saw it and said, man, are those the same buildings? Uh, but uh, this is a very stylized view from the sixth floor of Georgia Street. Uh, I painted this in February, not, not because of COVID-19, uh, but in fact, uh, Basically, as uh, an examination of some urban issues, and I wasn't, I was trying to lay out um, um, the issues that exist and successes that we've had in our current environment and what's going on. I wasn't trying to be particularly judgmental, but there's a lot of things that we've been having struggling to work out over a number of years in the Lower Mainland, and there's a number of things uh, in the words here that are probably quite difficult to read that have been real big successes. So it's uh, you know, it makes Vancouver and, you know, the North Shore really livable places and wonderful, but man, we've still got a lot going on. Um, I love the composition I ended up with, however, uh, especially in the world of COVID. It seems to be a little more relevant and there's even a greater, another narrative here in that I left the streets 
tree of people and street feet trees. I agonized for a while when I was doing this, whether to put them in, but I decided that would take away from what, you know, really what the issues I'm trying to, uh, you know, bring to the surface a little bit without actually making any judgments about. So I thought that it's a really, uh, it's a cool looking painting in the current environment and seems to uh, uh, have some resonance with what we've been going through for the last while. Um, and the two on the bottom, uh, these are from a series that I've been working on for a number of years. I do two or three of these a year. Um, and this is called Windows Into, uh, is uh, the name of the series. And they're really about things that appeal to people is really what uh, this is all about. Uh, and it may not be that easy to see that in here, but you know, what we've got here is the, you know, the, the colors and the, this is uh, silver, uh, silver leaf on the side. They're really, when you see them live and framed up, uh, they're really radiant and they really attract your attention. And, you know, they, uh, they, you know, they give people a lot of, there's a lot of enjoyment associated with this, which is something that people, does appeal to people. Uh, there's also structure in these things quite a bit, and uh, people need that. It's, uh, it's a good thing. Um, the palette knife work is really free, which is something that, uh, you know, I think is uh, very appealing. And then there's this window in all of them, which the series is named after. What I'm really trying to do here is create a little bit of movement around the picture plane and through the picture plane, in fact, to just create a little bit of mystery, just... Uh, get people thinking a little bit and uh, some of them you know really do invite some introspection more than others but uh, that's really what this is all about just I'm having um, I'm not always feeling really negative is what I'm saying these are these are supposed to be fun and enjoyable and just uh, make you think a little bit and put a smile as well that's um, that's it excellent oh, that's wonderful thank you Eric for sharing that awesome I'll just give everyone uh, watching a little reminder that if you want to ask any questions of any of our artists, uh, you can type that in at the bottom of your screen. There's a little uh, Q&A icon. That's where you can uh, type in questions for our, for our wonderful artists, and hopefully we'll be able to get to some of them. OK. All right. So we heard a little bit about this, but why don't we uh, hear from each of the artists uh, how uh, how sheltering in place right now has affected your artistic practice, uh, your career, and maybe what are some of the positives that you uh, didn't, didn't anticipate coming out of it? Yeah, let's start with Lori. Okay. Oh, well, you know, I returned from Mexico. I think I'd cocooned for a couple of days. I didn't know it was going to be for a couple of months. <laughs> but um, I've uh, adjusted on some levels uh, very easily because I am. Um, Kind of, I isolate myself anyways as a as a uh, studio artist, so I'm used to that. Um, what was your question again? Oh yeah, um, how is it? Sorry, forget the question. It, you oh. gave three parts of that question. Yeah, <laughs> kind of lumped a bunch of them Bring together. Bring it down for me. My brain can only handle one at a time. <laughs> yeah. So how has how is the current situation of having to shelter in place? How has that affected uh, your artistic career? your artistic practice, um, and, uh, and what were some of the positives? All right, Rick, stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <laughs> I, uh, I was coming home to expect that I had four, five, well, four, one exhibition happen, but four other exhibitions that would be, I'd be traveling to LA, New York, and uh, a, an exhibition at the Queen Elizabeth Theater here with three, three floors of art and uh, an exhibition up in, um, in northern BC and it all went it just all stopped it, you know it, everything was either canceled or postponed so I was just kind of like running and then well in my mind I was, hadn't started running but I was in that mode and so everything just kind of had to stop I was in shock for a bit but then I um, like human beings we adjust and I started to really enjoy parts of being kind of uh, I you know stuck at home you know basically I felt like I didn't have to go out and do anything and be part of anything. I didn't, wasn't missing out on anything either. So um, what has happened to me is that I've kind of um, slowed down 
and kind of more like simmering, just enjoying my mornings more than I've ever had before. I don't feel like I have to strive for anything. I uh, have, I've, um, I, I live alone. So uh, I try to go to bed early because that's probably the toughest time of the day because that's when I need my social, physical connection with people. But um, I get up early and then I enjoy my garden. I've been working in my garden more and um, my work has changed in different ways. I've, um, I'm not, first of all, I had to come up with some um, ideas of how to bring in an income. And so I, um, I have a newsletter and I sent one out and I, I put in a couple of ideas. One of them was an idea because I have a studio full of art that's not going anywhere. And as I said earlier, my work needs to get out there. Part of my process is, is I want people to see my work and to respond to it. So I thought, why don't I create a kind of um, an idea around that? So I had this idea and I called it borrow today for a brighter tomorrow. <laughs> so what I did is I invited people to come and borrow my work. And they could be caretakers. And what I asked in return would be some sort of, um, they could give me some donation of some sort. So, so far I have 13 pieces out there. <laughs> and I even got testimonials that, you know, to add to more inspiring other people to, to borrow my work. And I'm happy to have them up on their walls. They're happy because they have a new, you know, they're stuck inside their homes. And so, but if they knew work, then they could not necessarily maybe afford work in the past. And now they can have beautiful work of mine. And uh, instead of, you know, so that used to be were prepared for galleries, and now they can have them on their walls. So that makes me happy, it makes them happy. The other, I decided because I'm an educator that I, um, I would start teaching online. So that was a huge learning curve. I had to learn Zoom and I had to learn how to set up my studio, but, um, and I put the word out and in the first week, which was last week, 22 people signed up. And so, yeah, and I'm actually having a hoot because, um, well, I don't have to clean up my studio or, you know, go somewhere. I could just stay at home and then, um, and people invite me into their homes and they have everything set up and I can pin them and I can see their work and, and I'm actually connecting to people from all over the world. Someone from North Carolina, from Toronto, I just, you know, I just see the potential. And I'm kind of enjoying it and I can see I could take that anywhere in the world. So I'm starting to kind of have a presence online. And um, I'm getting into video a little bit of things like me, video of me gardening and taking my camera on my nightly walks and taking photographs. And I think that, uh, oh, and I also got involved in a um, virtual uh, exhibition. Actually, it wasn't virtual. It's in, South, it's in Korea. It's called uh, Virus 20. And it's uh, in South Korea. And what they did is they invited people through Instagram to submit their work. And then they printed it out and put it up on walls in the gallery. And then photographed, videotaped it, and put it back on Instagram. So I'm part of a show in in South Korea, and I have to say, I would, would never have been in that show if it wasn't for. Yeah. That's great. That's that's pretty amazing. <laughs> so I thought I wasn't very busy, but I think I am. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. Let's turn the the same question over over to you, Sue. Um, how has uh, you mentioned this a little bit when you're talking about your artwork? But yeah, but how's the current situation influenced how you make art, what you make, and uh, what are maybe some positives that have come out of it? Um, it is actually quite disturbing when all the galleries are, are closed down. So you cannot join the opening, then meet wonderful people, wonderful artists. And you couldn't directly like communicate with the other artists. That's really disturbing. Uh, at the beginning, it's, um, it's feel uncomfortable. It's feel like uh, you, uh, everything stopped, you know, then um, you stay at home and uh, quiet and as I actually found I lost I have time to think about my new works and uh, I some are already planning to uh, do but haven't started so I don't do because I'm I'm mom too so I have to before I have to drive my son to you know after school class so now I do not have to he stayed at home too <laughs> doing his homework so I was uh, doing my painting um, I have uh, spent a lot of time to uh, uh, create my new works and to uh, think the connection and how I react to this kind of very special 
a problem right now. I hope I can use my artwork to connect and react uh, to what's happening now. And so I created my, uh, I think, very new style of the work. It's very different from the before. So that's really excited. And also I, um, I started to react to my uh, group chat. Um, that they are my students and my friends and uh, some people is that uh, they are really interesting art so I start to use online to communicate with them and share my works and uh, other artists works and introduce some amazing artwork art activity with them so it's it's great I, I, I didn't feel I lost the con contact actually there's make more and uh, I hope my sharing can bring their happiness and uh, it, it's it's really different, but it's uh, I think uh, it's it's really interesting at uh, this kind of you know special very special <laughs> the period of time. So I think it's good. Yeah, awesome, wonderful. Glad you're able to find some some inspiration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and on to you, Eric. What what do you have to say about this? <laughs> um, there's been some negatives associated with this for sure, in that. Uh, I'm not as established as uh, Sue and Lori, so this was a year where I had, that I'd really dedicated to, um, you know, building a network, getting to know people, getting to uh, meet a lot more people in galleries and going to openings and that sort of thing, and really uh, uh, making myself a, a little bit better known than I am. So it was uh, obvious that's been a bit of a downer. Uh, you know, a lot of exhibitions simply been cancelled uh, or deferred or gone online in several of the ones that I had. Uh, intended to hope to show in, at least uh, where I was answering calls, uh, simply didn't, um, ha haven't happened or won't happen. So that's uh, uh, definitely a bit of a downer, but there's certainly being upsides. I think uh, um, artists possibly are a little bit introverted and love spending time in their studios. So it's been, uh, it's been great. I've been able to uh, paint much more than I normally would like gets pretty busy so it's been uh, been great I've done some things that I'm really really happy with so uh, that's been good uh, also you know I've you know I've got to spend more time with my wife more time in my garden uh, it's uh, it hasn't uh, it's been far from uh, uh, entirely negative so uh, you know but you know that that's basically it I, uh, um, I there's some opportunities lost but really in any situation there are there's some things that you can make happen, you know, that improve uh, your world. So that's basically it. And I've been, uh, I confess, I haven't been um, entirely morose the whole time, as the others have said. <laughs> well, thank you. That's that's great to hear um, that in these trying times that you all have been able to find you know, positives, you'd be able to find inspiration and ways of connecting with people and new ways of doing business, um, and new ways of thinking about your artwork and, and what it means to you and what it means to your potential audience. I think that's, I think that's really important for people to hear that kind of thing right now and not be so, so bogged down, you know, with, you know, all the, the doom and gloom and to, to hear that there's positive things happening. Um, so our last question kind of dovetailed into our first question from the audience, kind of similar. So why don't we just uh, go right to that? Um, so this is your, your Q&A opportunity, everyone. So if you have something you want to ask these artists, jump in right now. Um, so I'm just going to uh, paraphrase this question a little bit. Um, it was from, uh, ho hopefully I don't uh, pronounce your name too wrong, but from uh, T.U., um, so basically they were asking, um, how do you see the current state of isolation affecting, um, these issues, uh, and our perspectives on them after everything starts running again? So how do you see art, uh, what art, what role does art play once we reopen? And that's up for anyone. Jump in, anyone, go ahead. I, I, I can start. I was thinking about this a little bit and, uh, I was really happy to see the announcement yesterday that says, Galleries and the library can open as part of the first wave. So definitely looking forward to that. Uh, I think um, you know during this and you know the disruption in people's lives is going to continue a bit, uh, you know, for quite a while. So, I, but I think um, art um, and, and the art community can really provide you know 
Um, we can provide diversions to people that you know give them some enjoyment when things aren't you know before they get you know get to return to work and that sort of thing. Uh, and you know they can be great for community building when it comes right down to it. These are you know art galleries, libraries are community hubs, and I think uh, if um, you know if the art community can continue doing things like these online exhibitions and uh, you know opening and um, uh, getting um, Getting the galleries is, you know, open uh, as soon as they can, but staying in touch uh, and letting people know uh, you're out there and that uh, the art is out there, I think it, uh, it can do a world of good. Awesome. Cool. I would like to say, uh, add to that. Um, you know, I think art, you know, artists are the soul of our society and that um, they've they've really shown up for the, you know, the heart of, of, uh, of, of for the people, you know, the, and specifically the musicians that, uh, it seems like that this online thing has been really, um, leans well for their, for their art expression. And, uh, it's really opened up and kind of lifted a lot of our spirits. Uh, I think that, um, we're, Artists are inventors, um, makers, creative. They're, they're the leaders at this time. I think that it's because of, um, we ask a lot, we, we ask a lot of questions and we're problem solvers and we think out of the box. And I think we're the leaders at this time to find our way out of this. And I do believe that artists will find, um, not necessarily me, but uh, some brilliant artists will figure out how to create art where uh, physicality is involved, you know, to get off online, but actually have gathering people together in a physical space and to see the art in a physical, in the real time and space. I think art is not really necessarily, at least mine is not necessarily meant to be on a two-dimensional surface. You don't see, you know, it, experience it. And um, I'd hate to see that not continue. I, I, it's important for us to engage with our art. Um, as far as the environment and, uh, you know, where is that going to go? I mean, we're using more plastic. I can't even take my recycled bags to get my groceries. You have to use the plastic, yet plastic is what the COVID likes. It's, it's on for like three days or something. So, you know, I, it's almost like I'm kind of afraid that the environment, the, the big manufacturers are going to just start producing more and more plastic, you know, because of this. And I just really hope that that doesn't happen. I, I almost have a bit of a romantic uh, feeling of experience about this time. Um, I'm, I'm afraid that it might lose some of it after we go back to what's, I guess, called normal, that we'll forget about all the beautiful things that have happened because of, of the time. So, yeah, I, I feel sorry for our world planet, maybe, you know, I don't know, I'm optimistic a little bit. <laughs> I have to be, <laughs> that's how I survive, but, you know, the silver lining thing. But I do think artists are the ones that basically, that's my feeling. Artist. Yes, totally. Yes. <laughs> I I actually very excited to hear the news. Uh, uh, the gallery will open uh, in the middle of the May, and also other kind of uh, uh, restaurant. And uh, um, I think people can be uh, more active and contact physically directly again. And this is very exciting things. Um, uh, even we have good time stay at home right now. But I don't think it's a good thing for a long period. We still need to keep contact with others uh, physically, uh, not just through internet. And uh, also, um, I was sad because uh, uh, when everything closed down, I also had a solo exhibition in June. That I don't know when it will be on. Um, so right now, I at least I know maybe delay a little bit, but we still are. That's very good news for me. And... Uh, um, I, I think uh, even when the gallery uh, uh, open again, um, I still hope that if we can keep the online digital show. Uh, I found it, it's a really interesting way for artists to, to show their work, not just their community. Maybe there's more people have chance to see your works. And um, um, 
because because some people like uh, uh, Laura mentioned that he he can she can display his work in South Korea, you know if we just display uh, in the local gallery, only local people can see. But if we open the digital exhibition, then more people can see, and uh, we can share our uh, uh, ideas, our loves of our world, and I think it's a great idea. But definitely, um, I think physical gallery is uh, very important for us to uh, stay open um, because when you work in the actual space, you enjoy artwork, it's a very different experience. And even also when you listen in the music in the theater, it's very different from when you listen in the internet. Uh, I think it's, it's very important to uh, keep us you know, gather again. And uh, of course we have to be safe, <laughs> healthy. So I really looking forward to uh, the gallery's opening. Totally, yes. <laughs> Stephen, Stephen, I'm excited to see where this all goes because I know there's people working on it. We're all used to um, seeing art on walls or in galleries and now we're having to do it virtually and in different formats. And I'm excited to see where that goes. Are we going to start hooking up to audio visual um, like augmented reality or are we... I, I don't know, someone's working on it somewhere uh, and little brain cells are, are starting. Creation is beginning, so we'll see where that all goes. Yeah, definitely, yeah. New experiences, new ways of experiencing the world, which means new ways of experiencing artwork and new ways of creating artwork. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot to, to explore in the coming months and, and, and years as we get back to, uh, get back to, as, as Lori said, quote unquote, normal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think uh, we've just got, yeah, we've got time. We've got two more questions here in the chat. Um, OZ asks, uh, Eric, what method did you use to get such depth in the green piece you did? It's all so beautiful, they say. <laughs> uh, green piece was... Yeah, all that. Uh, oh, okay, yes, I know, I, know the, I know the piece. I've got it, I've got it. Um, Oh, that's basically, there's a, there's a silver leaf, which obviously helps, but the rest of it is simply palette knife work with maybe, you know, with quite a bit of, uh, of medium in it. And it's just, um, it's just an attempt to be really free and I'm, I'm choosing and or mixing colors that are designed to be transparent for this so there's a certain luminosity in them. so it's a combination of the color itself the amount of medium that goes in there and the way that it's applied i have uh, uh, a particular tool that i used to put this on with and it's uh it just it allows me to be as smooth or not as i uh, as i want so i have uh, i've been playing with this for a while and it, uh, it's something i'm really happy about I'm really happy with Awesome. Excellent. Uh, we've got another, uh, oh, it's more of a comment than a question, but it's great. Sue says, um, I think we will all appreciate our artists even more as a result of COVID. There has been so much tremendous artwork to see online, and it has helped to keep us engaged and thinking during this time. Thank you. Well, thank you, Sue. Thank you for mentioning that. That's wonderful that, uh, that that's uh, touched you in that. I wanted to just add that uh, if anyone's interested, um, museums like the Museum of Modern Art are offering free courses in art. And I actually signed up to do one too. And it's really fun. And there's so much to learn and it's all free. You know, think about that if you want to engage more in, in the art world. This is something that's shown up that I'm finding that some of the galleries are doing, which are engaging the community in art making ideas and then also art history and yes, it, 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 uh, giving it to people for free uh, which I, I i totally appreciate yeah that's another silver lining that's come out of this all the free content i i i was going to make a a list of resources for the library and it was just too long and <laughs> so i just i gave up because it's just amazing. And I wanted to thank all of the participants, both attendees and panelists for being open to this new forum, because this is all very new to us. And um, again, it's not some the way that we usually observe art, but thank you. Yeah. 
one more question. Um, this is a question for you, Sue. Um, your pieces uh, have small silhouettes of people in two of them. Um, can you elaborate on why you chose to make them silhouettes and not uh, fully fleshed out characters? Um, I, I feel right now that uh, it's, uh, you know, the environment is a uh, uh, fall of the coronavirus. I feel we are living in the shadow. So I just use a very simple, like great people. It's more like we uh, like are very feel like uh, um, very upset and uh, very anxious and very scared and uh, very down mood for the people because we are right now live in the shadow. Um, and we try to, uh, uh, you know, try to find a way to out. Um, but at the same time, um, the, the whole painting is still very colorful. So I think we, in, in our, our heart, we still have carried uh, lots of hope, loves to like support each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Uh, and there was a question for Lori. Um, could you comment on the piece of art behind you? And is it one of yours? Well, I like to say that I would like to be a collector of other people's art, but I don't to collect my own. <laughs> yes, it is mine. <laughs> and uh, it is, uh, I don't know if you can see the whole thing, but basically it is, um, actually came from an ex my own per a personal experience I had of taking, my son had a car, his first car, and it lasted, I think, three months, and it had to be recycled. And so they have a program in the city where you take it to this uh, recycling plant. So I went out with him and in the distance there was, um, you know, nature and then this pile of metal, but I actually made it into, um, not, it's not really metal, it's a collage. So it's a collect and a collage painting based on that experience. And again, um, that neon um, aura around there is, is me kind of saying, you know, it's still alive, it's still moving, it still has energy and it's um, a bar of waste. And, and just kind of juxtaposing it with this beautiful nature and making a statement about what we're doing to our environment. Uh, it's about a, a 60 by 30 inch painting. Cool. Oh, that's great. Awesome. Thank you. It's great. Yeah, you can, as you can see, all of our artists have pieces of their work behind them. So it's, it's cool to get a sneak peek into their studio and see more of their work. Um. <laughs> So I think that's, uh, that's about all the time we have from the, uh, from the Q and A. Um, it's getting close to time to wrap up. Um, so I'd just like to say that, uh, you know, thank you all for showing up again, um, because it's important that you have come to, to watch this and to experience this and support the arts because art is really, you know, it's critical to the health and vitality of our community. Um, you know, um, these three artists and all of the artists around the world are providing, you know, an important service um, to us um, by sharing their work. Um, you know, their artwork can, can stimulate our imaginations, um, make us ask questions, um, inspire new ideas, inspire action, offer us hope, um, reflect what we're feeling, make us look into other people's uh, points of view. So it's, uh, it is, it's really a service. So thank you so much for showing up and, uh, and, uh, and experiencing this with us. Um, so um, as we're kind of wrapping up, I'll kind of remind everyone that uh, once again, um, check out the rest of the, the Art Walk, um, as it were, the online Art Walk. Uh, you can go to uh, westvanartscouncil.ca and you'll have a list of uh, all of the galleries um, participating in the Art Walk. Once again, it's uh, the Arts Council, um, our Vanessa Purse, um, the West Vancouver Memorial Library, uh, the West Vancouver Art Museum, the Ferry Building Gallery, and Buckland Southurst Gallery. Um, and also go to uh, the library's website to see even more uh, examples of, uh, they've got another list of other uh, exhibitions happening on the North Shore. Um, and uh, and I'll, I'll just, I'll remind everyone, uh, anyone who registered, I'll be sending out a resource list of all these links, everyone's websites, Instagrams, Whatever we talked about tonight, you'll you'll get a link to it. Yeah, totally. 
Yes, you can enjoy this again and again. And yeah, we'll have, uh, <laughs> we'll have this, uh, we've been recording this evening. Um, so this uh, whole panel will be available um, in the next few days. So you can watch it again and again and share it with people who maybe weren't able to, uh, to register for tonight. They can hear these wonderful conversations and see these uh, amazing works of art. And, and stay tuned, we may have more programming coming yes. up. Yes, the, the Art Walk, uh, we're planning something in for June, so we'll see what that will be. Yeah, so please stay tuned to the Arts Council and, uh, and the library and see what we have coming up. Um, now, for our wonderful artists, where can people find you if they want to look for more of your artwork? Any, any websites or social media you'd like them to follow? They could uh, find me on www.lauriegoldberg.ca. I'm on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and here. <laughs> Thank you so much for everything, by the way. I really um, appreciate that you invited me and that I got to be part of this lovely panel discussion. Thank and you. I'm at uh, www.ericbartno.ca. And uh, I'm also on Instagram as Eric Bartno. Yeah, I use uh, Instagram and uh, uh, Facebook. Uh, my Instagram uh, uh, name is Xiang Su, uh, down slash uh, arts. Awesome. Excellent. We have one more uh, comment here in our questions, and it says, hooray for librarians, too. <laughs> <laughs> I would also like to uh, thank um, the support of the District of West Vancouver um, and the West Vancouver Community Foundation um, uh, with this uh, Art Walk project and uh, this Art Walk talk. Um, both big, big supporters, um, lots of resources, um, and they've been doing a lot of really great work in our community um, always, um, and especially right now, um, and it's supporting not only the arts, um, but plenty of other uh, wonderful organizations as well. Uh, I'd also like to thank all the participants. It's because of uh, you that uh, this was, I think, a success. So thank you very much. And uh, especially once again, Taryn and uh, Stephen for all the work you put in. Yay. Yes. And once again, thank, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and thank you uh, to everyone watching right now. Um, we wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you, if we didn't think there was a, a need for you to, uh, to experience this. So, so thank you, and hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll all talk again soon. So take care, and yeah, look out for uh, that resource uh, page that uh, the library will be sending out. And, uh, and stay tuned, uh, stay connected, uh, stay safe and stay inspired. Thanks so much and uh, enjoy your night. Thank you for spending uh, the first part of it with us. <laughs>